while I'm looking at the ways in which Jesus spoke about what's called the golden rule, it's actually two things he said. He said uh, to this guy who was kind of somewhat trying to trick him, he may not, this particular guy, Pharisees, Sadducees, always looking to trick him, talking to him about how, uh, what's the greatest commandment? What, what's to be viewed as the greatest commandment in the Bible? And Jesus says this answer. He said, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So there are two things that are somewhat connected by Jesus, multiple places in the Bible where we've uh, looked at this the last few days and a couple weeks. Uh, and this is called the golden rule. A lot of people talk about this thing called the golden rule. This is the golden rule. This is literally what the golden rule is. So it's an enormous value uh, if the society itself calls this a golden rule. Looking it up, you see these uh, things create a direction Jesus gives you. Most Christians would say, well, give the Lord all your heart. You hear that all the time. You'd never hear a Christian say, don't love the Lord. You're loving the Lord with too much of your heart. But many times you hear Christians say, don't give, you're giving too much of your strength to the ministry of the Lord. Now, they'd never say the one, but often you hear that other one said. But the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all. And this is the one that is put out of context. People don't seem to get it. All your strength. How on earth? does that look? That's interesting. It's, you know, you think of a bodybuilder, you think of all these things that get going in your mind when you think of strength. I want to just point a couple things out. I pointed this out last week. This is my main point in my message at this time slot. Loving the Lord with all of your strength, if you don't, if you say, well, I'm not going to give any of my strength to the Lord. I have a feeling you um, seed something, not like a seed in the ground but it's like you give something away in the area of your mind. It's like not loving the Lord with all your strength allows this uh, thing to happen in your mind where you seed something to the enemy. That's kind of how it looks. One of the verses, Jesus is actually quoting a verse out of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 6, 5. The verse he is quoting says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all, uh, like all your mind and all your strength. And it, does, it links mind and soul in that verse together. So it's one less. Sometimes in the Hebrew, concepts are linked together that in Greek thinking, which is what the New Testament is written in, that's why it adds one in the New Testament. It's not that Jesus added one. It's inferred in that Old Testament verse. That's what they thought of. The Hebrews thought those things were connected. The only reason I point that out is these concepts are connected. So Jesus dropped, added one because they are connected. So in thinking, strength and thinking often go together. The Bible says you can't uh, say that you have faith without works. That's what James says. So if you're looking for that in the New Testament, that's exactly where you see it. Show me your faith without works. You know, you can't. There aren't any times where faith and works are completely um, pulled apart. And this is the concept. You, you will, if you love the Lord with your whole heart, use your strength too. That's faith without works. Essentially, it's, a, it's not a similar concept. It's connected. Faith without works is dead. So you have to love the Lord with your strength if you love him with your heart. And any time you would ever hear someone saying to you, don't love them with your strength, they're not loving them with their whole heart. So when you love, when you love, it looks a certain way. It's with everything within you. And I think I just wanted to teach on this uh, for a few weeks. This is your life. How you love the Lord with your whole life. These are the four things that really make up your life. It's like saying, I really love my wife with all my heart but I won't lift a finger to help her. I mean, it's comical to suggest that. And it is comical to suggest you're not to love the Lord with all your strength. It is absolutely absurd. And it is totally taken out of context for anyone to ever suggest that. It's ridiculous. And it is the furthest thing from what will get you anywhere ahead with the Lord. So 
any even toying with it. It's ridiculous. I don't know how someone could be that off and saying it and people say it all the time. Because this is the pinnacle thing, Jesus said. So you're really far off from what the Lord has for you, if that's your teaching or that's your thought. Now, I'm not saying you prove that you love somebody by exhausting yourself doing ridiculous things for them. But you get what I'm saying. You can't, you can't put the two together. You can't say you're going for it with the Lord. I'm not going to lift a finger to do anything for the Lord. I'm going to love him with my whole strength. And that's really challenging and it's really upsetting for some people right now. And I have no idea why. I have no idea why. I cannot tell you why, but I can feel it. And I feel that don't let the enemy give you an excuse to not do things for God right now. And this is how he seems to be trying to seed it. Don't give that back to the Lord. Don't give your strength back to the Lord. Keep that for yourself. You deserve it. Well, what you deserve is the, lo the Lord wants you to be full with joy. I actually got texts after my morning message this morning saying, could you expand more on being the tail and not the head? Well, here you go. I addressed it already. Within minutes, I'm addressing text messages. I'm responsive. What you want to be with God is you want to be responsive. Some of us are like, oh, I didn't realize I needed to love the Lord with all my strength. I need to make sure, Lord, how do I do that? What's your Holy Spirit saying to me? I want to be responsive. Lord, teach me to be responsive. Joshua said, make sure you're observant to do all the Lord has commanded to you. Now, I want to just point out in this message, Joshua saying, make sure you are observant to do everything Moses commanded us. And then he gives this verse to love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Now, he uses the different phrase because in Hebrew, these things are connected. They don't have they didn't have to spell them out as much, but Jesus spelled it out more. Why does it matter to Joshua? As he was going into the promised land, and as you go into the promises of God, make sure you remember this stuff. When you take the promised land, you have to remember to do these four things. It's very important because in the Bible, that's what they do. So as they're about to go in to take the promised land, as they're about to fulfill the mandate that they had, when you go into your promises, make sure to revisit this in your life. That's the important thing to catch. Joshua didn't say it when they were all done. Joshua says it as they just had begun. And just as you begin going into your promises, reevaluate re those four things in your life. I'm, am I loving God with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, all my strength? Why? This is what I want to get to you. If you get your promises and you lose the Lord, that's the worst scenario. There's times where the Lord tests you. And when you get what you want is the most dangerous time to, to stop loving the Lord with those four things. That's exactly what the Bible says. Shout out to Joshua. So the provision of promises... And the way people say it these days is it's easy to love God in the valley, but your real test is on the mountaintop. Are you on the mountaintop? Are you in the valley? Whichever one you're in, we're, we were in the most horrendous valley for two years, many of us. Some of us might be on a mountaintop being allowed to go out for dinner. Some of us might be on a, a mountaintop just because we can go on a vacation. Some of us might be doing all that kind of thing. But the greatest danger is not often in the valley. It's actually on the mountaintop. When you receive your promises, you're often open to the most dangerous season of your life. That's the season when you take the Lord for granted and you don't give him those four things. If at the start of them going into the promised land, Joshua reminded them of how important those principles were. Remember, whatever season you're in in life and wherever you're going, whatever has been done, praise the Lord. But remember, if you get the promised land and lose what the Lord has for you, that's what happened to the Israelites. That was the greatest warning of all. 
what God was giving them was not a thing, it was himself. And that's what the clincher to this promise is. The greatest gift of all is not you getting a promise, it's you getting God himself. That's what Joshua was telling them. And that was the critical thing about these four things. Loving the Lord with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength and all your mind and reminding them as they go into what they were promised means the thing that they were to love the most wasn't the land, wasn't the things they got. It was to, to keep God number one. If you graduate the promise over God, you're cooked. I mean, if you never have hope for a promise, you're in as much trouble, but just remember, keep those things. They are invaluable to make sure you are loving God. Some people try and redefine their life when they get a promise, or they look for something in the middle of a situation and they say, well, uh, I don't need the Lord as much as I used to need him. I do notice that in COVID, a lot of people, they go to the Lord when they're in crisis. The second they're kind of out of it, they get on with life and kind of forget the Lord. Whatever you've been given, make sure that you keep those four things. What matters in the four things is that you're loving God with everything you are. That's the key. So the matter, the thing that matters here is that you're loving God. That's the, of most importance. And it's not in a shallow way. And that's what Joshua said. Remember to keep doing this because you're getting what you want, which is what, was, what has been promised. Take the difficult road, take the easy road in life, whatever road you take, if you don't love the Lord with all these four things, you're in trouble. Now I wanna shift it and simply say, if you do these four things, you will have a different road. So forget what you've had going on in your life. Joshua also reminded them, here are the promises and here's the fulfillment. Loving God with these four things creates what Moses called, you will be the head and not the tail. You will be blessed. You will have blessings, not curses. If you hold any four back of these things, you won't have the same blessing of the Lord in your life. Now, that's hard for people to understand, but there is such a thing as living a life where the blessing of God is on you. You can see it, and it is made available at times, and you will see people that have it. You can say, there's this unqualified, tangible thing you can see. That's what this is that Joshua is saying. Joshua is saying, if you want that intangible difference, for your family, for your children, for your future. It's not your value before the Lord, but it's that the fulfillment of these things. And that's why Jesus, please hear me, that's why Jesus said that's the most important thing. Even Jesus didn't redefine that. He just reiterated it. It's very important to see this. Jesus doesn't tell you that it doesn't matter what Moses said here. He said, this is the most important thing. If you love the Lord like this, you will live your best life and you can't arrange your life yourself to make it look like it will look if you do this. What is it? Loving God with these four things. This is putting your finger on the key importance. I think the point also to what Jesus is saying is you can't love God like that and not love your neighbor. So loving your neighbor is not forced and, the, and this is critical and I feel this is clear as a bell from the Lord right now. Very important to catch this. You cannot love your neighbor in your own strength the way God wants you to. Only when you love God like this can you love your neighbor like God wants you to. So you can't be more spiritual than the other guy and say, I got it figured out how I'm to love my neighbor and he doesn't. If that even came out of your mouth or entered your thoughts, you know you're not doing it the way God wants you to because the way God wants you to, that thought would never come across your mind. Putting down your neighbor as you being better. That's definitely out of the character of loving God those four ways. So I don't know why I feel this. I feel it as clear as a bell. If you love your neighbor, the best way to love your neighbor is by loving God those four ways. It's an overflow of your love for God. 
So you can't love your neighbor and say, well, that pastor doesn't know what he's talking about or that Joshua doesn't have a clue what he's saying uh, as he's entering the promised land. He has no idea what he's talking about. What he was reminding them is, you got to love God these ways. That's what he said, to be blessed in your life. And that's how you'll love your neighbor. God, you'll look out for your neighbor the way God wants you to if you love God in those four ways. So don't look at Joshua or me or whoever and say, you don't know what you're talking about. I don't got to love God with all my strength. I can love my neighbor my own way. That's the way it comes. The way, God, the way it comes matters. And this is how I'm going to close today. When it comes to blessing, the way it comes is the, th the way that matters. Those four things, the way the blessing comes is through loving God those ways. And the way the blessing comes to love your neighbor is through those four things. Jesus wasn't saying love the neighbor first and God kind of secondary. How you love God will be the way, the entrance for the way to love the neighbor. And that's how it looks. It overflows out of the four. So you can't disconnect one of those four and say, well, I, I've got it figured out, Joshua or Paul, how to love the neighbor. You don't. doesn't matter what the Bible. Jesus said that's the most important thing. And that's how it arranges itself, is it links. And what it is, is those four things really make up your life. That's your life. What we call your life, giving your life to the Lord, this is it. And what God has for you in fullness doesn't come until you love him with your whole life. And that's what your life is, those four things. It's funny, well, I love him with my life. Your life isn't your kids, your life isn't this, your life isn't that, it's those four things. It's all of your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. Yeah, you love your kids with all your emotions, but that's only one of the three. Now, yeah, your kids can be your life or this or that, but God takes care of the rest when you give him your best. And those is, that's the best of who you are your emotions, your mind, your heart, your strength. That's what makes up our individual life. So God wants your life. It's awesome. It's an awesome responsibility to give. So I'm gonna just close with this thought. It is an awesome responsibility to give God your life. That's a responsibility. It's actually, Jesus said, in another way, the way we would put it, the greatest responsibility of all is to give God your life. Guard your heart. You know, that's a critical passage. One thing is critical, your heart, let alone all four. Give God your whole life and God will give you the rest in a way that you could never match in your own strength. God's got your back. God's got something good for you. Remember it on this warm summer, sunny day. I do want to mention this. There are so many people in the church that have got COVID in the last week. I'm praying for you if you're sick. There were so many people at church that you're normally uh, there. I know you're homesick, praying for you. I guess we got waves of this stuff blowing around. God bless you this day. I pray the Lord would get you excited for a life given to him. If a life given to him doesn't excite you, you're missing something. A life given to God won't just have value, it'll be happy and it will be blessed. And what I mean by blessed is I mean the Niagara Falls blessed. That's like going under a waterfalls. That's the kind of blessing this type of life ends up getting. In the name of Jesus, I pray. God bless you in the name of the Father. I don't know why I feel to say this. And there's, I have not said this online. God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.